Hey, hey, this is Chad from Ascension Worship with Tech Tuesday. Today we're gonna to talk about something very important for you sound guys, gain structure. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. All right, friends, let's hop right into it. For those of you who aren't familiar with what gain structure is, um, here's a quick diagram. Uh, over here, we have our input source. In this case, it's going to be a, a keyboard that we're listening to. We're going to focus a lot on this today. This is our head amp gain. This is the, um, the gain control that's on your mixer that controls the volume before it goes into the digital world. Uh, this is really important because if this is off one way or another, then everything else down the line is going to get thrown off um, and eventually ends up with your speakers that your crowd's going to listen to and uh, other outputs such as your in-ear monitors, your recordings, that kind of stuff. So again, um, this, is, uh, this is really important. This is our analog uh, gain control. If this is wrong, everything else is wrong. So we're going to talk a lot about that today. Um, so for our example, uh, I've got a recording of a keyboard. It sounds like this. Uh, just a standard C major chord that's being played. Um, and I've got, um, for your demonstration, I've got two different encoders here. Um, this one's representing our analog gain, this guy here. And then this one is representing our channel fader, um, which is right towards the end of when it's getting out to, uh, to what your crowd's going to hear. Um, it, the reason why I have it looking like this is for some of the demonstration of things that we're going to do later on. Um, but it's basically representing this guy. So, um, let's first really start talking about, um, once you have something that's being plugged in for the first time, in this case, a keyboard, um, how do you go about getting it into the board? So the first thing you want to do is turn your fader and your head amp gain down. If you have a mute switch, you probably want to go ahead and hit mute as well. And what I'm going to do is have the, uh, the keyboard channel play. This is like as if we're having a, the keyboardist um, play for us for the first time. Um, ask him to give you whatever your loudest volume is going to be. And as he plays, I'm going to be looking at this meter here. And what I'm going to do is I want to get it to where it's close to hitting the red, so the very top, but that it's not. Um, so what I'm going to do for this purpose is I'm going to make it hit the red, then back it down, and then let you hear what it sounds like. So our keyboard's playing, I'm gaining it up. I'm starting to see some signal, but it's quiet. I'm getting near the red now. Okay, I've hit the red. So now that I've hit the red, I'm gonna back it down. And then I'm gonna back it down a little bit more just to be safe. So at this volume, according to my meters, I'm getting about seven dB of room before it's gonna start to hit the red and distort. And I'm going to show you what that sounds like in just a bit here. So now that I know I'm getting a good signal and even if the keyboardist gets a bit excited once there's a drummer playing with them, uh, I know that I'm not going to hit the red. Now I can start to turn my channel fader, which is represented by this guy right now, I can start to turn that up until I hear it in the house. So this is indicating how much volume we have to work with everything that we have here. And then this channel fader, this is what's going to affect how loud it is when it actually gets to the crowd, um, but it won't be affecting um, like things like the in-ears, which uh, you don't want things turning up and down in your worship leader or your keyboardist ears all the time because it's really distracting. Um, so it's okay if this is below zero. So if we're looking at this fader here, if it has to be here so that it's not you know, blowing off uh, the roof once that keyboard starts playing, that's completely fine. Some people are um, in the other school of thought where they want to have all their faders at zero and then turn their gain up and down to, to get the volume they want. That's not really an appropriate approach. I'm going to show a quick example why in just a moment. Um, so for today, for 90% of my uh, purpose of what I'm teaching you here, it's better that you get a proper input gain. So again, looking here... We're getting good signal, but we're not hitting the red, and we've got a little bit of room to make sure that once they start playing loud, we, we still don't hit the red. And then use your fader volume 
to level it out for how loud it is in the room. So real quickly, before we finish for the day, I want to show you the extremes of um, doing it incorrectly. So th the reason why I'm using these two encoders is because I can link them. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it sounds like when the gain's too hot. But to keep your speakers from being um, blown away, this fader is going to turn down. So it's like as if we had too hot of a signal, but we used our fader to make it quieter, um, what it would sound like. So again, here's our original signal. If we look at our waveform, you can see it's got a nice peak and then it kind of levels out towards the bottom. Now here's what happens when you overgain it. So I'm going to purposely make it hit the red. So that sounds really nasty. If we're looking at our meters, we've, we've hit the red. We cannot go any louder without distortion. And if you're looking at this waveform here, you can see it's done what's called clipping, where there was a waveform here and then it kind of evened out. It's kind of said, okay, no, you're not going any louder than this. And that's um, what's causing that distortion. So again, it should sound like this when you overdrive your preamp. And when I say preamp, I mean your, your head amp gain that's when you start to get this clipping here. Um, notice that the fader's down, so it's quieter, but the issue is what's called signal to noise ratio. Even though the, f the entire signal is quieter, the uh, distortion is just as loud as the signal. And so by turning it down, yes, the distortion gets quieter, but then again, so does the, the overall signal. So it's really important that you not uh, overgain, um, but you get a proper input gain that's not hitting the red. Now, quick, uh, quick side note going the other way. Again, I said that you shouldn't um, undergain uh, your signal. Uh, here's what's gonna happen. There's noise in my signal no matter what. Um, it's electronics, everything's being plugged in. However, looking at this right now, so this is when there's no signal happening. You can see that you can't, it's not loud enough the noise that you can um, see or hear it at this point. Um, but listen to what happens when I undergain it. So again, these two are going to work against each other. I'm going to show you what happens when your signal's too low, but you compensate by turning your fader up or, you know, any of these different things in here, um, that will allow you to increase the gain from, from input to output. Um, you're going to start to get, because these are all digital, you're going to start to get some more noise that you, um, well, you've, you've always had, but you didn't really realize. So again, here's our, our clean signal. Now listen to what happens as I start to um, undergain, but compensate with um, boosted volumes elsewhere. So we're starting to hear that noise now. Um, for those of you who don't have headphones, I'm gonna go all the way. So that sounds really bad, but listen to the keyboard. The keyboard actually sounds the same. It's just that signal to noise ratio I mentioned is off now. And you can actually see it on here. This is all that noise in the signal. So this is what it should sound like. But when you over, uh, I'm sorry, when you undergain it and then compensate with digital, you get that. So that's why it's really important that we um, go for a proper gain on our input gain and then use our fader gain uh, just to level out how loud it is in the house. So real quick before we go, I'm gonna recap that one more time. When we're checking a signal for the first time, be it keyboard, vocal, kick drum, pastor's mic, whatever it is, first thing you wanna do, nine times out of 10, turn your, uh, your levels down. So I've turned my fader down, I've turned my analog gain down, um, and then have them play, make sure they're giving you plenty of volume to work with. Start gaining it up, look at your meters. Get to where you're kind of close to the red, back it off, and then back it off a little bit more to be safe. As long as you're not crazy undergaining it, um, it's better that you be slightly undergained than overgained. Um, it's better that you have a little bit of noise than distortion. Uh, and inevitably, any keyboardist, guitarist, vocalist, bass player, any musician, even your pastor, will get louder um, than they do in sound check because they've got more excitement happening. So once we get our proper gain, we're not hitting the red, then we turn our fader up, whatever volume ends up giving it the, the amount that you want for the house. But it's really important that you get this right or else this won't even matter. 
Thank you for checking in with Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.